We've already talked about the fastest cars in the world. We've discussed what the fastest drag racing cars are capable of. And we've covered various technologies. But today, we'll tell the full story of the fastest car in the world, the Bloodhound LSR. Bloodhound LSR, the path to the record. On October 23, 2008, the development of the jet-powered car Bloodhound SSC was announced, with the goal of surpassing 1,600 kilometers per hour. Since then, a 13.4-meter-long body has been designed, standing 3 meters tall and 2.5 and meters wide, made of carbon fiber with up to 13 layers, successfully passing ballistic tests. This was done in case, during a run at speeds above the speed of sound, a rock or debris were to hit the car. For the driver, a carbon fiber monocoque was constructed, similar to those used in the most expensive hypercars and Formula One race cars. The rear of the Bloodhound is divided into upper and lower sections. The upper part houses a Rolls-Royce EJ200 jet engine. producing nine tons of thrust with a dry engine weight of 990 kilograms. The lower part contains a rocket engine, which engages during the run. A Jaguar V8 acts as its pump, moving 40 liters of hydrogen peroxide per second. As a result, the Bloodhound's maximum power output will be equivalent to 135,000 horsepower. The wheels, capable of supporting the seven and a half ton car at such speeds are made of a special aviation grade aluminum zinc alloy with each wheel weighing 95 kilograms. The record attempt will take place on a specially prepared 18 kilometer track in an African desert cleared with the help of local workers. 16,500 tons of rocks were removed. This is the largest land clearing operation ever conducted for a motorsport event. Accelerating to 1,600 kilometers per hour should take just 55 seconds with the pilot enduring a constant 2.5 G-force. But after reaching such speeds, the seven and a half ton vehicle must be stopped. By closing the throttle, the car will begin braking naturally at around 3G, slowing to 1,300 kilometers per hour. Next, an air brake deploys to maintain the same deceleration, reducing speed to 965 kilometers per hour. The parachutes then activate, efficiently slowing the car to 400 kilometers per hour. Finally, steel disc brakes bring the vehicle to a complete stop. After this, the car must be turned around, and within one hour, a second run in the opposite direction must be completed. The average of the two top speeds will determine the New World land speed record. Originally, Bloodhound SSC was supposed to attempt the record in 2015, but funding shortages delayed it. Then it was rescheduled for 2016, but financial issues arose again. October 26, 2017. The goal was to reach 320 kilometers per hour using the jet engine and test all systems, including braking with disc brakes. The car accelerated to 322 kilometers per hour in just eight seconds, with the pilot experiencing two G-forces. The test was a success. 
Next, the Bloodhound SSC team began preparations for high-speed tests, which were supposed to take place in the summer of 2018, but the run did not happen, and again, for one reason only, lack of funding. To complete the entire project, an additional 25 million pounds sterling was needed. Originally, the project was planned with a total budget of 60 million pounds sterling, or 70 million dollars. This means that 35 million pounds sterling had already been invested in the project. In December 2018, the project was officially declared closed, and 10 years of work were about to be scrapped. But then came a savior. British businessman Ian Warhurst, who contributed his own funds to achieve the goal and would seek further financing for the record-breaking run. On March 20th, 2019, the Bloodhound Project officially rose from the dead, now rebranded as Bloodhound Land Speed Record. It underwent a redesign, secured the necessary funding for further development, and began preparations for a second, now high-speed, test run. The new goal was to surpass 800 kilometers per hour, then break the current record held by the Thrust SSC at 1,127 kilometers per hour, and finally reach its ultimate target speed of over 1,609 kilometers per hour. The first task for the revamped Bloodhound LSR was to relocate the entire project to a new base. Since most of the development was already complete, they could save money by moving to a more compact facility. The track in South Africa had been maintained in excellent condition all this time, thanks to the local community. Additionally, precision markings were applied using navigation systems, ensuring lines were drawn with an accuracy of two and a half centimeters. While rubber tires were used for low-speed testing on runways, special aluminum wheels would be used in the desert. These had to support the five and a half ton car at speeds exceeding 1,600 kilometers per hour. At low speeds, the wheels would create grooves 10 to 15 millimeters deep, but as speed increased, the grooves would shrink to as little as three millimeters. Movement across the sand would resemble a speedboat gliding over water, creating sand sprays from the wheels. Since the wheels would already be moving faster than the speed of sound during testing, this supersonic sand dust could damage Bloodhound LSR's composite body. To prevent this, aluminum liners were installed inside the wheel arches. The Bloodhound surface was covered with 192 pressure-release tubes equipped with sensors. These would measure aerodynamic pressure in real time to detect any flow instability and make necessary adjustments. Additionally, the entire car had around 500 sensors and cameras recording terabytes of data for post-run analysis. An extra fuel tank was added for the jet engine, featuring an aluminum powder-coated exterior, explosion-resistant foam lining, and dual tanks. The rocket engine would not be used in this run, as it was still in the design phase, so more fuel was needed due to slower acceleration. Two additional pumps were installed, each capable of moving one kilogram of fuel per second. From an aerodynamic standpoint, the most challenging part of the run would be between 500 and 800 kilometers per hour, as this range would see the least surface contact and a transition to aerodynamic control. For braking, the sequence would be aerodynamic brakes first, then parachutes, and finally, mechanical brakes. To begin high-speed testing, the Bloodhound had to be disassembled and shipped in parts across 8,800 kilometers of ocean. After arrival, it was reassembled in nine days, and testing began. The first day's goal was a static engine test. Followed by a 160 kilometers per hour run to evaluate the brakes. Each subsequent run would gradually increase speed, culminating in tests above 800 kilometers per hour.
The second run reached 320 kilometers per hour, and the third hit 534 kilometers per hour in just 20 seconds. The car handled sudden wind gusts with stability. The sixth run achieved 742 kilometers per hour, but the second run that day was canceled due to minor body damage requiring repairs. The ballistic testing had proven necessary. The next day, the car reached 791 kilometers per hour, but more body damage forced another cancellation. The ninth test run was aborted at 774 kilometers per hour when an overheat sensor in the engine compartment triggered. Inspection revealed several malfunctioning sensors, with temperatures reaching 127 degrees Celsius, seven degrees above the safe limit. The engine was reassembled, sensors repaired, and the cooling system upgraded with revised environmental temperature limits. A week later, Bloodhound was back in action. The twelfth test run surpassed the 800 kilometers per hour target, even exceeding 900 kilometers per hour. However, a new problem emerged. Dust seepage between the monocoque and chassis, posing a potential risk to the driver. Using only the EJ200 jet engine, the car accelerated to 1,010 kilometers per hour in the available 50 seconds. far beyond expectations. Braking occurred in two stages. A parachute deployed at 950 kilometers per hour. At 400 kilometers per hour, disc brakes engaged at 45 bar pressure. Maximum brake disc temperature stayed below 450 degrees, despite a 1,000 degree tolerance. The stopping distance was slightly longer than calculated. The tests were successful, revealing numerous issues to address. It was time to return Bloodhound to base and prepare for the record attempt. To achieve the record run, Bloodhound needed a rocket booster to be developed by NAMO in Norway. It would run on high-test peroxide, an environmentally safe concentrated hydrogen peroxide solution. Under high pressure, the peroxide would pass through a silver-catalyzed mesh, decomposing into 600-degree steam and oxygen, directed through a nozzle for thrust, no combustion, no flame, and zero harmful emissions. The team also decided to replace the 550-horsepower V8 with an electric motor of comparable power and a battery system capable of pumping 40 kilograms of HTP per second, enough to fill a home bathtub in three seconds. Similar rocket systems are used to launch small satellites, and for Bloodhound, it would provide at least a 75% thrust boost. Additionally, the team explored running the EJ200 jet engine on biofuel instead of conventional jet fuel to further reduce environmental impact. However, the record attempt required another 8 million pounds sterling. Then the pandemic hit, and no further investors were willing to fund the project indefinitely. As a result, Bloodhound was mothballed, never achieving its ultimate speed record. 